the old GMC has a very tired 350, and I'm assuming it's original or it's at least been quite a while since it was rebuilt. So how much blow-by is this old small block experiencing? We're going to eliminate the PCB valve and find out. Now, one argument you'll get from the old school guys is, well, you don't really need a PCV valve. It's just dumping garbage into your engine. You don't need it. Just put two breathers on your on your uh, valve covers and call it good. Well, I don't disagree that it probably relieves some pressure out of the crankcase. But before you do anything to the emission system on your vehicle, and the PCV valve is an early emissions type system because instead of venting that to the atmosphere it goes into the engine to be burned make sure you check your local and state laws that you can modify that without getting to any trouble so that's the first and foremost if you've got a local and state laws that say you cannot modify that none of this matters after this you can shut the video off right now now i'm not going to spend a lot of time about what a pcv system is there's tons of videos out there on what the system is and how they operate, but we need to cover a little bit of the basics here. So what's a PCV system do? Well, it removes the pressure from the crankcase caused by the blow-by from the pistons and rings. And in an older engine, like the one that's in this truck, the, the worse that condition is going to be. Now it also pulls water vapor. Uh, it pulls the misty oil that's that may be floating around in there some contaminants are going to get pulled through that system and it all just gets dumped in back into the engine into the carburetor or in the intake system and burns it gets rid of it so does it work sure the pcv system works really well and on this engine there's really no reason to remove it but i need to find out just how much blow by that this engine is experiencing because i want to know what without really doing any other investigative work, this is a really easy way to see how much bad stuff is happening within the engine. If there's a lot of blow by and we get a lot of oil uh, that's coming through the system, then we know that there's a lot of pressure building up in that crankcase and well, a rebuild's gonna be down the road sooner than later. Now let's quickly take a look at the PCV valve that came off the GMC, just so we get an idea of how it works. Now I cut this in half. Uh, so you can take a look at it. lines attached to the top. In this case, it goes to the carburetor, and that's where the vacuum source for the engine is coming from. It's below the throttle blade, so it's picking up constant vacuum. At idle, when we are at high vacuum on the engine, it's going to open the valve up and evacuate the crankcase of whatever is in there, pressure, if there's any water vapor, if there's any oil vapor or anything other funky that's kind of floating around in there, it will pull a little bit of that out of there. And it just dumps it right back underneath the carburetor, down into the intake manifold, down into the runners, into the combustion chamber, burns it and spits it out the engine. In this case, I want to know how much of that is going in there or how much is being caused by the engine from the blow by of the pistons and and the rings and just what the condition of that is and one way we can do that is by eliminating the system and installing a catch can now this is a really simple catch can it's very inexpensive it doesn't cost a lot of money and this is an open system style now there's some closed system stuff that is certainly a lot more sophisticated that essentially just recycles the air out of the engine it will take all the particulate matter oil water vapors solids whatever's in there and kind of settle it in the bottom of the the catch can and then let that air go back into the engine um, or into the system very very nice but these are, this is an inexpensive way to look at it. we're just trying to look at what is going what's coming out of the engine pressure wise and in this instance uh, because it's got a, a larger breather on it it should help us pull a little bit more volume of stuff from the engine into the catch can and out the breather and we'll see what it collects now these cheaper catch cans are empty there's nothing on the inside of them and we need something in there to help the oil and water and whatever other contaminants are in there floating around to give it some more surface area to hang on to so there's an easy quick inexpensive thing you can shove in here to to give it that surface area that we're looking for to help all that hang on to but there is some 
little differences of things that you need to be aware of here. So first thing you do is we'll hop down to the local store here and we'll take a look at scouring pads. Now these here have a soap that's impregnated into it. We definitely do not want those. Go to a different section. Here's some that have nothing on it. These are the ones we want. Now you don't need to jam pack this full in here. You're just, we're like I said, we're just trying to commit, create some more surface area for some of that stuff to hang on to. That way it captures it in the catch can and doesn't try to push it out through the breather. So we're just going to lightly, you know, put a few of these in there just to kind of take up enough space. Again, it doesn't have to be tightly packed. We're just trying to help, uh, you know, it to find something to grab onto. So we're going to take a couple of these put insert it in here and then we're ready to find a way to mount this into the truck. Now after a few minutes of just kind of eyeballing where I wanted to put this, I just made a very, very simple bracket, a couple of three inch worm clamps to clamp the thing on there. And now we can install the catch can into the vehicle and then start to hook it up or get it all hooked up to the valve cover where it's going to be pulling from the engine. And now that we have it installed into the truck and we found an easy solution to hook it up to the valve cover, and it's just a matter of hooking it all up and then put some miles on it. Now I'm going to put probably, you know, probably three to 500 miles on this thing. I'm going to try to anyway. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to get that many, but I think I'll get enough uh, miles on to at least give me an idea of what's making it into the catch can. Certainly the longer that I drive on this, if I, were to put a thousand miles on it, which is going to be pretty difficult to do this time of year, um, then it would just collect more and, and we'd get a better sample to look at. But I think this is going to give us a good uh, sample of what's going on in here. So we'll get this hooked up, we'll get some miles on it, and we'll come back and drain this and see what we got in here. Later. Well, I'm going to guess I probably have around 200 miles on this with the catch can hooked up to the valve cover. And I don't know what the results are going to be, but I think it's probably enough. So let's get this out of the truck and then we'll get it drained into a container so we can see what comes out of there. Now there's a little bit of stuff that's come out of here. It's obviously very dark. Um, I kind of expected that the oil has been changed recently, uh, so I, there's not a lot of contaminants from dirty oil, but it certainly shows that there's a lot going on within this engine. The darker it is, I think it's more of an indication not of what the oil looks like, because if I take a little sample out of the engine, it's fairly clean. Uh, I think it's just a matter of the combustion event happening and pushing past the pistons and rings. So there's certainly a lot of blow by that's occurring in this engine, but this was a quick, easy way to kind of determine that and kind of get a little bit of a glimpse of what's going on in there. Now, I'm not sure what I'll do with it. I will probably put the PCV system back onto the engine, let it run that way. Uh, again, this is not some, you know, 500 horse, you know, thing that I'm going to be hot rodding around. It's a cruiser. It doesn't really need anything sophisticated on there. The PCV system is going to be perfect for, you know, evacuating the, the pressure and contaminants out of the crankcase. So it's going to go back on there. But the catch can was a really easy way of determining 
what's going on in there and get a little bit of a glimpse as to what the garbage is is coming out of there. Now, the material, the, the scouring pads that are inside the catch can probably has got captured a little bit of this stuff. So the, the longer I let it sit, the more will probably drain out of there. Hard to say, but uh, I think this is, gives us a, at least a good indication of what's going on in there. Now, I don't know if we'll, like I said, we'll continue to run the catch can on there just to get, you know, a, a bigger, longer sample size. But I think it tells me everything I know. I, the engine smokes. It, it's it got a little bit of smoke that comes out of the tailpipe, uh, especially when it's uh, been sitting for a while. So that I kind of expected. But again, it, I knew what the engine or had a really good idea of what the engine was was you know, the condition that it's in, and this is just a verification of it. But if you want to run a catch can on a, on a race application, certainly those are very, very good. Um, turbo setups are very good to have a good catch can on. Uh, a lot of those uh, systems are a little bit more money than this one. I think total with the catch can, I've got probably 60 bucks in everything. Um, I had to buy another grommet for the valve cover and a little elbow to attach it all. But, uh, you know, in a couple, you know, foot and a half, two foot of uh, dash six line, but uh, not overly expensive. But, you know, certainly depending on what type of, of application you're using, uh, catch cans are an amazing piece. Um, I've got several of them around here just because I've had a couple of turbo cars and I always run a, a catch can in a boosted application. Uh, the pressure in the crankcase typically is a little bit more because uh, you tend to get a little bit more blow by past the, the piston rings and and uh, could cause more issues. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that, show you a little thing to get a little bit of a glimpse of what we can kind of look at to see, you know, what's going on on the inside of the engine. It's an inexpensive way to do it. And, you know, it kind of gives you a, an idea of what's being recirculated back through the carburetor and down into the engine. Now, I know that the intake manifold uh, will be a little bit scuzzier and dirtier, you know, the longer I run a PCV system on this engine because it's, you know, it's certainly taking a lot of crap out of the inside of the engine and dumping it back, uh, you know, or out of the crankcase and dumping it back into the engine. So uh, no doubt, um, you know, the running a catch can might be a better setup. But again, we're I'm not spending, you know, this engine at, you know, 5,000 RPM or or even 4,500 to be, uh, you know, to be honest with you, it's really a little low RPM, just kind of a cruiser. But anyway, I wanted to give you a good look at what was going on inside the engine. And it's a good way to kind of determine what's, what's happening. And, and that way you can kind of base your decisions on what you want to do with the engine and, and uh, what needs to happen with it. So if you got any questions about what I did here, how catch cans work, how PCV systems work, I'd be happy to answer them in the comments down below. If you want me to make separate videos on how a PCV system works or how a catch can system works, especially on a turbo application, I'd be happy to do that as well. So if you've got any other comments, concerns, questions, please leave them down below. And if you thought the video was cool, leave me a thumbs up. I always do appreciate that. So that's what we got rolling here and we will catch you on the next one.